Turn to the last chapter of the book of Acts. Acts 28, verse 23. Acts 28, verse 23. When they had appointed him a day, there came many to him to his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. That's the two divisions of the three of the Old Testament. Notice, Moses and the prophets. The others, the writings. Verse 24. Some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah, this is Isaiah, the prophet to our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, and saying, Here ye shall hear, and shall not understand, seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. Now note carefully what we're going to be reading here. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Now listen to verse 28. Be it known therefore to you, that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he'd said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Amen. You can be seated. You tonight have been the beneficiary of the many books that the Apostle Paul has written in the New Testament along with the Gospels of the original 12. Being the beneficiaries of this, many of you, and probably I hope all of you, but many of you no doubt have been born again. Many of you sit in this house tonight that you truly love the Lord Jesus Christ. You love the Lord Jesus Christ and a lot of your love for the Lord Jesus Christ is based upon the writings of the Apostle Paul right? When you read the books of uh, Galatians, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st, 2nd Thessalonians, 1st, uh, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, probably Hebrews, then you're reading the books written by the Apostle Paul. And these books uh, have grounded you in a sincere faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Absolutely. And uh, you wonder sometimes why Paul is attacked so much. Why do they assault him? Why is he the object of ridicule and scorn? And I've warned you before about the Hebrew Roots Movement. The Hebrew Roots Movement is trying to drag you back under the law and tell you that if you don't keep the law of Moses, that you're not a Christian, you can't be saved. That's exactly what they did in the book of Acts chapter 15. If you'll remember the message I preached to you this past Sunday night, I hope you were here Sunday night. If you didn't hear it, I would ask you to listen to the tape, or the DVD, because I went to the 11th chapter of the book of Romans, and in the 11th chapter of the book of Romans, I dealt specifically with a Gentile being cut off. Now, I have never heard, now I believe, I'm going to preface this by saying tonight, I believe in eternal security. Believe me, I do. I fully embrace that. When I first got saved, I wasn't sure about a lot of things. And I did a lot of research and reading and ran here and ran there and uh, was confused about a lot of things until I finally got it, finally got it established in my soul. When God saved me and made me a son of God and sealed me by the Holy Spirit, he gave me eternal life and I would never perish. And so I accepted that fact, although there was much to know, a lot to know yet to be added to that, a lot of the things in the New Testament that I had no idea about, I didn't really understand the difference between the dispensation of the Jew, God dealing with the Jew, kingdom of heaven, and then the Gentile, the times of the Gentiles and all that. But when I talked to you this past Sunday night, I talked to you this very important thing. I told you that the Apostle Paul warned the Gentiles that they could be cut off. Now I have never heard... And this is not to say it hasn't happened, but I have never heard a defender of eternal security deal with that scripture. Have you? 
No, you haven't. You know what I'm talking about. How many have any idea what I'm talking about? Look at Romans 11. Romans chapter number 11 and verse number 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity, but toward thee, goodness. Now, watch the conditional statement. This is totally conditional. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. You see that? I dealt with that Sunday night. And the way I handled that was simply saying, these are Gentiles. This is Gentiles. We're talking about Gentiles. You remember I told you the, the Hebrew, when Paul wrote uh, Romans chapter number 11, he had three basic groups in mind. The church of God, the Jew, and the Gentile. The Jew was broken down into two parts. The remnant that will always be saved in every generation for 2,000 years since Christ, every generation there has been Jews that were believers in the Son of God. But then there's the body of Jews who have been blinded. They've been blinded. That's what you just read about in Acts chapter 28. Blinded. Then the apostle turns his attention toward the Gentiles and says to them, now look at these Jews. They've been blinded. And because of their fall, salvation has come to you. Now, if you have read Ephesians, and I don't want to confuse you tonight, but I'm simply trying to give you the Bible. If you've read Ephesians chapter number one, the Bible says you, if you remember the body of Christ, were chosen in the Lord Jesus Christ before the foundation of the world. Whether a Jew or a Gentile rejected or accepted Christ had nothing to do with it. You were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. It's not all that simple, is it? You see what I mean? Everybody likes to simplify things so they can master it. Once they have everything categorized and they've simplified it, then they master it. Then they can strut their stuff in front of you. Well, let me tell you tonight. There's a lot of the Bible that no man will master because it's the mind of God and sometimes given in a parabolic way. It's, it's in the hands of God. But here's the point. In Romans 11, they could be cut off. Now, if I told you tonight that you, if you mock the Jews, if you mock the Jews and their blindness and, uh, and didn't continue in your faith that God would cut you off, and I use Romans chapter number 11 as proof positive, what would you do? You say, well, I either believe in eternal security or I don't. Well, I do. He's not talking to the church in Romans 11. That's the key. He's not talking to the church. Let me show you another place over here. Matthew chapter number 10. And verse number 5. Matthew 10, 5. Matthew chapter number 10, verse 5. And these 12, Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. Hold your place there and go to John 4. Verse 5. John chapter number 4, verse 4. He left Judea and departed again to Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar. Now hold on a minute. He just told him in Matthew chapter number 10 to not go in the way of any city of the Samaritans. Go you not. Then turn right around in John chapter number 4, he goes into a city of the Samaritans. How many's ever seen that before? <laughs> Now, what do you think about that? What if somebody pointed that out to you? What if they pointed it out to you? You know what the first thing you could say to them is this? Yes, but he said that in Matthew when he was offering the kingdom of heaven to the Jews. 
And the object of the ministry was the Jews and not the Gentiles. Remember he told the woman, the Syrophoenician woman, it's not right to take the meat to the bread of the children's table and give it to dogs. To dogs. I have come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But this is in the gospel of John. John's not interested in a kingdom of heaven. The burden of John is the kingdom of God. And John is the only one, John 3, that says ye must be born again. Are you following me tonight? There's a difference in this. This what I'm showing you tonight is rightly dividing the word of truth. It's so necessary to rightly divide it. Now a few minutes ago, I read a long, I read about 80% of this long treatise put on the internet by a Muslim. And the, the idea was that, uh, by the Muslim, that uh, Christianity is a product of Paul. You see, Christianity is a product of the Apostle Paul. And that what Paul taught had nothing to do with the Jesus who lived before him 2,000 years ago. Now this gives him a springboard because once he separates Paul from Christ, then he can attack Paul. And that's exactly what he did. He attacked him over and over again. Strange, folks, but birds of a feather flock together. Watch the crowd that attacks Paul. If a Muslim attacks him and a liberal attacks him, that makes me think they've got the same spirit. Right? Same spirit. This is why I said to you a moment ago at the beginning of the lesson tonight, you love the Lord Jesus Christ, don't you? You've been fed Paul all of your Christian life. Right? You judge a tree by the fruit it bears. The fruit of the ministry of the Apostle Paul is to build and establish in your soul a real love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? I mean, after all, by, by uh, the, the simple fact that you love the Lord Jesus Christ, you didn't get that from a Muslim. You didn't get that from liberal Christianity. You sure didn't get it from the pagan uh, world that I talked about in Sunday school this past Sunday. And I would, I would, I would, I would uh, invite you this coming Sunday morning, folks. We're just beginning to come to Sunday school. I want to cover some stuff in here that will be a great help to you and should begin to open up for you what's going on in this contemporary age that you're living in. It's not coming, folks. It's here. It's here. I was on the YouTube yesterday doing a little research, and I'd never noticed this before. But on YouTube, oh, it was on, at least it was on my computer when I was on YouTube, the top left-hand corner, it had a flag. It was a rainbow flag. And you put your cursor on that, and a little box pops up and says, and proud of it. Now, I don't know who that represents. Does that represent who publishes YouTube? Uh, Google. Does it represent Google, the leadership of Google? You know, are you following me? This flag shows up where they, where they stole the rainbow which is a good sign. The rain, there's nothing wrong with a rainbow. God put a bow in the sky for Noah and his, and his, uh, and his posterity. But they've stolen that, and, they, and that becomes the flag of, of the sodomite and the gay and the LGBT movement and all that. It's become their flag. And then up here at the top, it says, and proud of it. I don't think people realize how much has, has been infiltrated we're living there. We're living it out now. You're living in it, okay? Don't look to the future. You're in it right now. You're in it now. Your faith is being put to the test every day you live. And Canada, just a few days ago, passed this draconian law that said that if you have a child who is uncertain of their gender, all right, and you do not allow that child to make its own choice. And I'm talking about six, seven, eight, three, four, five. They go lower and lower and lower. 
You let that child, if you don't let that child choose its own gender and you try to interfere with it, they'll take your child away. My, what a wonderful government. Let me explain something to you and put priorities before you tonight. If they take your children away, you got nothing left. Forget that house you're living in, forget that car you're driving, and forget your bank account. When they take your children away, that, is, that right there is paramount to Nazi Germany in 1933 when Adolf Hitler became the chancellor. And Kristallnacht. Kristallnacht was the night of the long knives. It was the night of the broken glass. It was the night that they went into Germany. In Germany they went in and they drove the Jews out of their, their businesses. It was the night that the, that, the, that the government openly became hostile. Openly became hostile to the Jews. That was in Germany in World War II. Our, the good old U.S. of A., I hope they never let that happen here. I hope they never let it happen here because uh, if, that, if, that, if, if that day comes, then we're in bad shape. What happens then, preacher? Let me tell you what happens. The government takes your children from cradle to grave and they brainwash them and create what they intend to make out of your children and they'll throw you in jail and they'll take your kids away from you. Who ever gave the government that kind of right? Man, who do these people think they are? Who, what people would yield to a government that would come in and take your children out of your house because they don't like your Christian faith and, they, and, 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 they, and you're not going to and you're not going to yield to the political correctness of letting your child be uh, controlled by transgender fluid, fluidity and all the rest of that junk. But that's what's happening. It's not coming. It's here. It's here. Now, when the Lord was here 2,000 years ago, when he was here 2,000 years ago, he told his disciples, go not in the way of the Gentiles, but go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why did he say that? Have you really asked yourself a question? Why would he say that? Aren't the Gent don't the Gentiles need to be saved? Think about it. That, that demands thought. Go not in the way of the Gentiles, but go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why would he say that? If you're a thinking person, when you read that, it forces you to dig deeper and to find out what's going on. Why would he say that? Don't the Gentiles need a Savior? Aren't the Gentiles lost? Don't the Gentiles need light? When he went to the cross, did he only die for the Jews? That's what some of them are teaching. The floodgates have been opened. And every perversion of scripture imaginable now, it's just like the Jonestown flood back in the 20s or the 30s when that dam broke up there in Ohio or Indiana, somewhere up in there, and it killed thousands of people. Thousands of people just washed them away. It's like that. That's the way it's coming. It's just coming in a, just a flood. It's coming. You're being inundated every day of your life. The day of sleep and church as, it, uh, as usual, those days are over. You're going to find that it's going to be a struggle every day of your life to stand true to the faith and come to the house of God and support the scripture. You're going to find that. I get a letter just two days ago, two or three days ago, an email. It said, Preacher, Said we live, we go to a fundamental Baptist church. Said, Preacher, our pastor let two lesbians join the church the other day. Lesbians. Now I'm not talking about the doors back there. We don't check anybody's ID when they come in here. Nobody's ever asked anybody, are you homosexual? Are you a lesbian? Are you a drug addict? Are you a thief? Everybody's welcome to temple. Everybody's welcome. There's no, there's no test. But if you're going to join this church, and especially if you're going to be on the staff in this church, I think there should be some standards and requirements, don't you? Amen. If we openly endorse lesbianism, and, I, and two of them come down here and they kiss in front of you, 
What do you feel about that? They're doing that now, you know. Yeah, right here, they're doing that now in the churches. A fundamental Baptist church, folks, we're not talking about some liberal mainline Protestant denomination that went, to, went, went a long time ago. We're talking about fundamental Baptist church. Two lesbians joined the church, and it was okay with the pastor. See where we are? You judge a tree by the fruit it bears. So does the Gentiles need a Savior? When the Lord Jesus went to the cross at Calvary, who interpreted that cross? Who applied it? It's that hated Apostle Paul. In Acts chapter number 15, when the Jews said, Judaizers said, except you be circumcised and keep the law of Moses, you can't be a Christian. What if that had stuck? What if it stuck? What if there had been no Paul to rise up against it? These are questions that have to be answered. And these are the kind of things that I have to combat day in and day out. I have to be, I have to be on, on the lookout now more than ever for this stuff that creeps into the church. And it can come in. And I've got to watch for it like you wouldn't believe. I'm responsible. Hebrews says that I watch for your souls. I have to give an account. I have to give an account. And it's worse now. It's worse than it was a year ago. And it'll be worse next year than it is now. And I don't know how long they're going to, I don't know how long that the government is going to allow us to stand up and preach the truth. Because they may come in here with their goon squad and say, you have hate speech in this church. And they take your pastor and they lock him up for hate speech. That was one of the most draconian, miserable, godless things that ever happened to this nation. When it allowed a bunch of progressive liberals to ram hate speech down your throat. That's garbage. Because it is so ambiguous, so unclear as to what hate speech is. What constitutes hate speech. And when you get to a situation like that. Where somebody can say, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Muslim. And that preacher over there, I mean, listen to him. Well, he hates me. That's hate speech. And so they go lock up that preacher. All right. Or a homosexual says, here he is up here preaching from Romans chapter number one. That's hate speech. So they lock that preacher up. And it's going to happen on your job site. Some of you are securing your jobs tonight. Good, thank God for it. But some of you may be losing your jobs in a year or two or three if this onslaught is not stopped. This is why I got so upset over eight years of Barack Obama. Lord help us. I got so upset because I knew that he was, easy, he was either a Muslim or a Muslim sympathizer. I knew he hated Christ and Christianity. And am, I, am I wrong? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. And I knew that, that if there's any hope, any glimmer of hope, and I don't put a lot of hope in Donald Trump, but <laughs> he is, he is age is better than Hillary Clinton. Well, somebody comes in, they say, preacher. We don't want you talking like that in church. Well, you're getting political. Well, when the Lord called Herod a fox, he got political too. <laughs> he got political too. Yes, he did. But the bottom line is I'm concerned about which way we're headed. And if I can do something to slow it down, to do something, something, a tangible, then I'm going to do it. And that's what I was doing as a pastor of this church. I was trying to keep you enlightened, trying to tell you and warn you about what's coming. We've had people get up and walk out the door, slam their Bible shut and walk out. Van Caldwell told me that when I was in the hospital four years ago, five, five in October, five years ago when all this heart problems started, the first Sunday I was gone. These two sodomites came in here and they sat back there on the back row somewhere back in here. And I don't know what they were doing. Kissing, holding hands, or something. Right here in this church. And I wasn't in here that Sunday. I was laying flat on my back in the hospital. And I think Van went to them, maybe another man, and went to them and told them, Boys, you don't do that in here. Did they have a right to do that? I mean, did they have a right to tell them to get out? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. But they could, they could have construed that as hate speech. See what I mean? The, uh, 
in, uh, in, Jew uh, in uh, Greek mythology, the thing called the Sword of Damocles. And the Sword of Damocles is hanging over your head. And something could cause it to snap, and when it did, right in the top of the head. That's what hate speech is. That's what it is. It is one of the worst things that happen to a nation that has the First Amendment, which is freedom of speech. That is a precious, precious gift to you from the founding fathers of this nation. Freedom of speech. Because once that freedom of speech is gone, you're a slave. And it's over with. You've done lost it. Amen. So... You're a Gentile in here tonight, but you're a member of the body of Christ. Are you still a Gentile? In Christ, you don't have women or men. You don't have blacks or whites. You don't have Jews or Gentiles. In the body of Christ, that's all gone. You know why? Because in the body of Christ, it's all spirit. He doesn't put your body into him. He puts your spirit into him. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Amen. So in the spirit, you're in Christ and there's no difference. So over here in the book of Romans chapter number 11, when he's talking about you Gentiles. And in Acts chapter number 28, the apostle Paul says, I go to the Gentiles. Once that Gentile is saved, once they're born again, they're no longer a Gentile. And once the Jew is born again, he's no longer a Jew. I want to ask you a question. The first man, Adam, was of the earth earthy. Was he a Jew or a Gentile? Did we all come from him? We all did, didn't we? The first man, Adam was made a living soul, all right? The second man's the Lord from heaven, all right? So that first man, Adam, every one of us, Romans 5, you go home and get time this afternoon, this evening, read it, Romans 5, we all came from that first Adam, every one of us. And he was not a Jew and he wasn't a Gentile. What was he? He's a man. And that's what you become again in Christ Jesus, mankind. In the generic sense, mankind. Notice, when God made Adam, he took a rib from her, his side and he made the woman. Man in Hebrew is ish. Woman in Hebrew is isha. All right. Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew uh, 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 alphabet, made a woman. Okay. Now, they, he called their name. What did he call their name? What? Adam, you look up the meaning of the word Adam, get your lexicon dictionary, look up the meaning of the word Adam, and it means of the earth, mankind. That's what it means, of the earth, all right? So in Christ Jesus, you don't have Italians, and you don't have French, and you don't have Portuguese, and you don't have Americans, and, and, and I hate to say it tonight for a lot of people, God's not a Republican, He's not, a, he's not an American. In Christ Jesus, they become like that first Adam, mankind. And I love that, don't you? All right, now here's a key to understanding all of this that I've been going on about. Watch the New Testament. Watch it carefully. And every time the word Gentile shows up, watch the context of it and be very careful the way it uses it. Watch it. Watch it. And when the word Jew shows up, watch that also. And in Romans chapter number 11, you've got Jews and you've got Gentiles. You've got both of them. But in Romans, in Romans chapter number 11, the Apostle Paul starts and ends with something very important. The book of Romans is like the book of Acts. He starts in the beginning with mankind. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Then he ends the book of Romans in the body of Christ, where Jew and Gentile become one in the body of Christ. The book of Romans carries you all the way through, and it deals with these people. It deals with the Jew. He said, Thou art a Jew, you claim to be a Jew, and knowest the will of God, a leader of the blind. 
yet you do what you say and can preach to others not to do. He deals with the Gentile. He said, the Gentiles, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. Their conscience either accusing or excusing them. There's the Gentile. All right. Then we come on down the book of Romans. And we come over there to chapter number 8 of Romans. And he said, and he said there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Notice, in Christ Jesus, Paul takes that doctrine in Romans chapter number 8 and he develops it. Before that, he shows you the complete, absolute, uh, uh, just absolute vain, vanity of trying to do anything that will justify you. Because he said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? But in the 8th chapter of Romans, he said that there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of liberty in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. And what's the law of sin and death? The commandments that were given that could only condemn. Nobody was ever saved by keeping the commandments. So he brings you to that point. Romans chapter number 8. Whether in Christ Jesus. Then he gets in particular... He said in Romans chapter number 9, My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel, my kinsman according to the flesh. There's the Jew again. He said, he said, I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. So in Romans chapter number 9, he said, I would to God that I would be accursed for my brethren, my kinsmen, after the flesh, burdened for the Jew. Then he comes to the 11th chapter of the book of Romans, and he goes all the way back to that Gentile in chapter 1 and the Jew, and he pulls them both together, and he shows you exactly what God's going to do with both groups. He says of the Gentile, he says that the fullness of the Gentiles is not come yet. But when it does come, the fullness of the Gentiles, then the Israel shall be saved. Romans chapter number 11. They're blinded until that time. So the Gentiles, the fullness of the Gentiles, right now is ticking away. Israel is blind right now. But they that are in Christ Jesus... There is therefore now no condemnation for them. And that's us tonight. Amen. Amen. Jew and Gentile, one and the same in the body of Christ. So I don't need Hebrew roots movements. And I have sympathy for my Messianic Jewish brothers and sisters. I know a lot of them love the Lord. I don't question that one bit. But they need to read a little carefully, more carefully in their Bible and they'll find out. That it's okay to be a Messianic Jew. But they are no different, not one whit different than you or me or anybody else in the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus does not have some special view for Messianic Jews that he doesn't have for Gentile Christians. No, sir. We're all the same. Make of twain one new man. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift.